Okay, so that gives us some mathematical formulas then for these three effects, length contraction, time dilation, relative simultaneity. Okay, so we need to define, we need to find out what are the values of alpha, beta, and delta. Okay, that's the goal. Okay, and the way we'll do it is we use this condition of the principle of relativity. Both of the observers should think the, the objects are contracted by the same amount. Both observers should think the clocks are ticking slowly by the same amount. Okay? Both observers think two different clocks are out of sync by the same amount. Okay? So it must be symmetrical between the observers S and S prime. Okay. That will probably be clear if I do an example. <laughs> Let me do an example. So what we're going to consider is we're going to consider two observers, S and S prime. The S prime observer is moving with a speed u relative to the S observer. Okay? And the condition is that they should agree up upon the effect. Okay? So if this observer measures the length contraction of factor alpha, then this observer should measure the, sa the same factor of length contraction. Okay? And the same goes for time dilation. The same goes for relative simultaneity. So our conditions is that both observers should measure the same factors, alpha, beta, and delta. Okay. And, according to the first postulate, they should both measure the same speed of light. So these are our conditions. Okay. And the equations we had, which are rubbed off against the length contraction, is this. Time dilation is this. And relative simultaneity is this. Right, so the easiest one to do is to do the experiment comparing the lengths of rulers of the observers. Okay? So we suppose that each observer has a ruler, and each observer measures the length of the other one's ruler. Okay, so to be specific, I'm going to consider the case where the S prime observer measures the length sorry, of the S ruler. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to consider the same experiment from the perspective of both observers. So first of all, what does S prime see when he does this experiment? So according to S prime, the observer S is moving backwards with the speed of u. Right? According to the S prime observer, he sees this guy moving backwards right, with the speed of u. So here's S prime. Okay. He's got a clock which is showing time zero. The clock is going to be important for a reason you'll see in a minute. And here's the S observer here, okay, and he's got a ruler, and the S observer and the ruler are both moving this way with a speed of u, okay. and because of length contraction, the length of the S ruler is L prime, okay, because it's been contracted. Right, okay, now, if we let this experiment run, so I'm going to suppose that at time zero, the two observers are at the same position. Right? At some time later, this observer will move all the way past the other observer. Right? So sometime later, the S observer will move all the way past the S prime observer. Now, the S prime observer can measure this length here by measuring the time it takes to pass. For example, if I know the speed is one meter per second, and I know the object goes past me in one second, then I know the object is one meter long. Right? So the S prime observer can measure the length here just by timing how long it takes for the ruler to go past him. 
Okay, and that's quite easy to see. So sometime later, the situation looks like this. The S prime observer is over here. Okay, he's got a clock, which is now measuring some non-zero time. Okay, and the ruler has now gone all the way past him. Okay, and his clock now is going to measure the time t prime, which should be equal to L prime divided by u. Right? Time is distance divided by speed. Right? So that's what he will measure. Okay? So he can measure the length here by measuring the time t prime it takes for the ruler to pass him. What you do is you measure time taken time t prime for the ruler. You go past. So that's the experiment from the perspective of the S prime observer. Now I want to consider the same experiment from the perspective of the S observer. Okay. So according to the S observer, he sees S prime observer here, with his clock here measuring time zero. Okay. Then his, he sees him going this way with the speed of u. And the S observer here sees his ruler not length contracted. Okay? So the S observer thinks that his ruler has the length L, not length contracted, right? Because it's stationary relative to him. Okay? Okay, and we'll also give the S observer a clock to measure time. Okay? So that's what it looks like starting, and they agree on time zero at the beginning. And again, you run the experiment until the ruler has gone past the S prime observer. Okay? Or in this case, the S prime observer has gone past the ruler. Okay? So in this case, it will look like this. Here's the S prime observer then goes over here. He's got a clock here, measuring some time. We're going out with this with you. The S observer is here. He's got a ruler here, and he measures some time here. Okay. Right, now we can say that the time, he measures the time t, and he measures the time t prime. You can say in this case, the time that the S observer measures t, again, is equal to distance divided by speed. But in this case, the distance is L because he thinks his ruler is not length contracted. Right? So he measures a distance L and a speed U. That makes sense. Now we can get a condition relating time dilation to length contraction by comparing the results of these two observers. Okay? So this first observer In the, in the S prime case, we get a time T prime, which is equal to L prime over U, which is equal to alpha times L over U. Okay? And this alpha is the effect of length contraction. But also, T prime is equal to beta times T, because of the effect of time dilation. And T, we've worked out, is L over U. So this is equal to beta times L over U. So we have these two conditions, this one and this one. And you see, if you put them together, right, the results of the experiment must be the same. So this time here should be the same as this time here. Right? It's the same experiment. So therefore, these two things should be equal. And hence, 
the only way this is, and is possible is if the factor alpha is equal to the factor beta. Okay. So this is our first conclusion. I'm going to call this um, A. Okay. Okay, let, let me briefly just explain again what we did before the break, because there were a couple of questions and I think it maybe wasn't clear enough. So the point is, we're doing an experiment to measure the length of the S ruler. Okay? And we've considered the same experiment from both observers' perspectives. And the way we measure the length of the ruler is, according to S prime, the ruler is moving, right? So he just waits for the ruler to go past him and measures how long does that take. Okay? And that takes a time t prime, and it's easy to work out that must be L prime over U. Okay? Where here this L prime is due to time, uh, due to length contraction. Right? The length of the ruler is shrunk because it is moving. Okay? From the S perspective, do the same experiment, he measures a time L over U, right? Because the ruler is not length contracted, it's a full length. But he also measures that the S prime clock is time dilated, right? The clock is ticking slower. So therefore, T prime is equal to beta times T. And the crucial thing is, although the observers disagree in the sense that S prime sees length contraction and S sees time dilation, they must agree on the measurement, right? They must agree on the final result, what is T prime. Right? So therefore, this T prime here should be the same as this T prime here. So they disagree on the interpretation of the answer. This guy thinks it's due to length contraction, and this guy thinks it's due to time dilation, but they agree on the answer. Okay? That's the important thing. Okay, right. So as I said, we, we need to find out these parameters alpha, beta, delta. And we can do it by considering these experiments and making sure that um, both observers measure the same length contraction, time dilation, and simultaneity effect. Okay, so I said just before the break, the experiment we're going to consider now is this. The S prime observer is trying to measure the time dilation of the S clock. And he does it by using two of his own clocks, which let's say are separated by a distance L in his frame. Okay? And he watches the S observer move this way, and they compare the time on the clocks here, and then again, when this clock comes to here, he compares the time on the clocks again here. Okay? And he should see that this clock is slower than this one. So you can already see this is going to have an effect of relative simultaneity, right? The S, obs S prime observer thinks that these two clocks are synchronized, therefore the S observer will think that they are not. Right, let's see what it looks like then. Okay, so S prime observer sees the following. He sees his two clocks here, which are synchronized, so they both show time zero, and as I said, separated by a distance of L. He sees the S observer here with his clock, which originally starts at the same time. And he sees the S observer moving this way. The speed here. Okay. Now, sometime T later, this clock goes past the second clock. So sometime T later, sometime T later, Later, okay. So the clocks are still synchronized according to S prime. And he now sees the S observer moving past the second clock. And his clock shows the time T prime. He's moving this way with the speed of U again. Okay, now, so according to the S prime observer, time T is obviously equal to L divided by U, okay? Because again, it's the distance divided by the speed of travel, okay? 
and there's a time dilation effect, so therefore t prime should be equal to beta times t. Because of time dilation. Right? So that's what the S prime observer must see. What does the S observer see? Okay, so he sees this, but he sees this length contracted, and he also sees the clocks out of sync. So let's draw it. So he sees the two clocks like this. Move it this way. The speed u. He sees the distance here, L prime, because of length contraction. Okay? Good. Um, but he also sees this relative simultaneity effect. So the relative simultaneity effect says that if S prime thinks these two clocks are in sync, then S will think these two clocks are out of sync, and the, the clock in front will, should be behind in time. So therefore, this clock here should show more time. And the, the more time it should show is what we've called delta. That's how we define the time dilation effect. Okay, so he sees the, the starting position like this. Then, he sees the final position like this. He hasn't moved, so he's still here. This is clock. S. Okay, I'll work out what his clock says in a minute. Okay, then we have the two clocks of the S prime observer here. Moving this way with the speed u. Okay, distance between them is still L prime. Okay, right, so the point is we have to work out what does the time on all the clocks say. Okay. So, this guy measures the time t prime, t prime because it's the same as what I call t prime here, right? Which is equal to, well, the distance is L prime and the speed is u. So the time t prime must be equal to L prime divided by u. Okay? Because of, yeah, just distance divided by speed. Now, these clocks are time dilated, okay? So this clock should measure a time, let's call this one t2, which will be equal to t prime times beta, right? Because it's time dilated. It's slower than this one. Right? And this one will measure the same time difference, but it's ahead by a factor of delta. Okay? So therefore, this clock will measure a time t1, which is equal to which is equal to, sorry, T2 plus delta. Okay. Okay, right. <coughs> okay, so that's the, the experiment from both observers' perspectives. Okay? Now, this is what I call T1, so let me call this T1 again. Okay, so I, in the final case, these times here must be the same. So this T prime should be the same as that T prime, and this T1 should be the same as that T1. Okay? So observers must measure same final times. Okay. So if I consider the same T prime, what does that tell me? Okay. So this first observer measures time T prime, which is beta times T, and T is L over U. Okay. So I get beta times L over U should be equal to whatever the other observer measures, and the other observer measures the time t prime, which is L prime over u, and L prime is the length contraction effect, so again, it's alpha L over u. Okay. 
So this one is, tells me what I already know, alpha is equal to beta. Okay, so I don't get anything new from there. But if I look at what does it mean that both observers measure the same time t1, then I do get something different. Okay. This observer measures time t1, which is just L over u. And this observer measures time t1, which is t2 plus delta, and t2 is beta t prime. Okay, so let me write it out. So L over u is equal to t2 plus delta, which is equal to beta t prime plus delta. And then I can use the expression for t prime here. Okay, this is equal to beta squared L over u plus delta. So these two things must be equal, and therefore I conclude from this that delta should be equal to 1 minus beta squared times L over U, comparing these two. So that's the second condition on these coefficients alpha, beta, delta. Okay? So we'll call this one equation B. Right, so now we have to just do one more experiment. Right, so we've got two equations. Maybe I'll keep a track of them up here. Okay. So, so far the conditions we've got is that alpha is equal to beta and that delta is equal to 1 minus beta squared L over U. Okay. So I just need one more equation to define everything. Right. Three unknowns, so I need three equations. Right, okay. So the final experiment we're going to do is measuring the speed of light. Because the final thing we need to be true is that both observers agree on the speed of light. That's the postulate of special relativity. Right, so measuring the speed of light. Okay. So I'm going to consider the experiment where the S prime observer measures the speed of light. So the S prime observer is going to be here with his two clocks again. Two clocks. Zero. Zero. Okay. And there's a beam of light going past here, which has speed c, and he's going to measure the speed of light by comparing the time at which it passes this clock and then the time at which it passes that clock. Right? And then he'll calculate the speed of light from that. Okay, so again, I'll draw the same experiment from both observers' perspectives, and they must agree on the result. So what does the S prime observer see? He sees the following. Here he is with his two clocks. Zero. And zero. Okay. He sees light going this way. Speed C. And then sometime later, he sees the light past the second clock. And at which time, L, both clocks should measure the same time, T, which is equal to distance divided by speed. Right, so that's the end of the experiment according to S prime. Right? He watches the light go past, passes here at this time. So it's much more interesting from the S observer's perspective So the S observer sees the following. So here's the S observer. 
He's got a clock, it says time zero. Here's the S prime observer. He's got a clock which says time zero. He's got another clock here which says something else. And he is moving. in this direction with the speed u, and he's watching the light go here. Okay. Now, first of all, there's a length contraction effect, so this distance here is now L prime rather than L. Secondly, there's a relative simultaneity effect, which says that if this clock shows time zero, then this clock shows time minus delta. Because the clock in front is behind in time. This clock shows time zero, this clock shows time minus delta. Okay. Right, so now we need to watch until the light has reached the second clock. So what does it look like when the light reaches the second clock? So the S observer hasn't moved, he's still here. He's got his clock, which is measuring a certain time we need to work out. Okay. So the S, ob S prime observer has moved, so he's now somewhere over here. Okay. He's got one clock here measuring a certain time. He's got another clock over here measuring a different time. Okay. That's all going this way with a speed u. And at this time, the light has reached the second clock here. Right, so, what time does he measure? The S observer measures a time, I won't call it T, because that's what I called there. Okay, let me call this one T prime, why not? Okay, sorry, the primes are a bit confusing, but anyway. This is not too difficult to work out. The distance here is L prime, and the relative velocity between the light and the observer is C minus U. So therefore, the time it takes for the light to catch this clock is equal to the distance L prime divided by the relative velocity C minus U. Okay, so that's the time he measures there. Right. This clock measures a time T1, which is equal to this, but time dilated. Right? So T1 should be equal to beta times T prime the time dilation effect. Right, he's got it going slow. This clock measures the time T2, which is equal from here to T1 minus delta. Right, because of the, the relative simultaneity effect. These clocks are out of sync by a factor of delta. Yep. Uh, yeah, right, okay, good. Okay, and this T2 here, the result of the experiment, should be the same as this time T2 here. This is what I call T2, it should be equal to L over C. Let's call them all T2. Be consistent. Okay, so the final result of the experiment is the light passes this clock when the clock shows time T2. Right? According to the S prime observer, it's simply this. And according to the S observer, it's this. So again, we have to work out what's the consistency condition. Okay, right, and then this will give us the answer. So both observers. See, same time. Two. Okay, so the first S prime observer measures T2 is just L over C, and the S observer measures time T2 is T1 minus delta, which is equal to beta T prime minus delta, which is equal to beta times L prime over C minus U minus delta, okay, so far, and then this is a length contraction effect, so this is equal to 
theta squared over c minus u minus delta times L. Okay, and I can rearrange all that to get an expression that delta is equal to I'll take L over C as a common factor. Then here I get theta squared over 1 minus U over C. Here I get minus 1. Right, so now we just, we've got three equations for the three variables alpha, beta, delta. We just have to solve them. So let me write up the third equation here. So delta equals L over C, theta squared over 1 minus U over C minus 1. So this is A, B, C. Okay, so the obvious thing to do here is to use B and C to get rid of delta and then find beta. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. So now we solve A, B, C. We find alpha, B. Okay. So if I combine equations B and C, then I get the equation... 1 minus beta squared L over U should be equal to L over C times beta squared over 1 minus U over C minus 1. Okay. So um, the L's cancel. Nice. Okay. I can multiply by 1 minus u over c, and I'll multiply by u as well. So here I'll get 1 minus beta squared times 1 minus u over c is equal to u over c times beta squared minus 1 minus u over c. So I've multiplied by the denominator here and also multiplied by u. So now I'll put all the betas together on one side. Let's put them on the other side. So here I'll get beta squared u over c from here. And then from here I get 1 minus u over c. And then the other side, I put the constants. On the other side, I've got 1 minus u over c from here. And then from here, I get plus 1 minus u over c times u over c. Okay. And then this side just gives me beta squared. right? And then this side, you can factorize. You get beta squared is equal to 1 minus u over c times 1 plus u over c, which is 1 minus u squared over c squared. Okay. So therefore, beta is equal to the square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared. So that's, as I said, it's a unique solution. The only value of the time dilation factor, which is consistent with the principle of relativity and the constant speed of light, is this one. Okay, then A simply tells me that beta and alpha are the same. So therefore, I also have that the length contraction factor is the same. Okay. Um, and finally, I need to get delta. 
So for that, I can use equation B again. So delta is equal to 1 minus beta squared times L over U. But beta squared is just 1 minus U over C. U squared over C squared, sorry. So this is U squared over C squared times L over U. Okay. From which I conclude that delta is equal to U times L over C squared. Okay. So, what we've shown is that if you require both postulates of special relativity to be true, that means you require the principle of relativity and the constant speed of light, the only factors of time dilation, length contraction, and relative simultaneity which are consistent with those postulates are these. There's no other choice. Okay, right. Good. So one important point which I want to stress, because this comes up a lot in special relativity. The principle of relativity says that if you do an experiment in two different reference frames, so you do the experiment at rest and then moving with a constant velocity, then the results of the experiment must be the same. Okay? That's what it says. But it doesn't tell you anything about the interpretation of the results. Okay? And in fact, what happens in special relativity is that the results are the same. Here that means that both observers measure the same time t2, but their interpretation of the result is different. Okay? S prime, if we look at this example. S prime interprets the result as follows. I have two clocks which are synchronized. They're separated by length L, and therefore the speed of light, and the speed of light is C, so therefore it takes time L over C. That's his interpretation of this result. Okay? Whereas S agrees, gets the same result, but he interprets it in a completely different way. S thinks S prime has these two clocks, they're separated by the contracted distance L prime. They are out of synchronization. There's a time difference between the two. And therefore, he ends up measuring the time T2, which agrees with this. Okay? So as I said, they, they agree on the result, but their interpretation of the result is different. Okay? And this is, is generally true in special relativity. The results of the experiments must be the same, but the interpretation, different observers, will have different interpretations of those results. Okay, in terms of the effects of length contraction, time dilation, relative simultaneity. Um, another point I wanted to make is that I've talked about these, we did kind of three thought experiments, right? One measuring length, one measuring time, and then one measuring the speed of light. But they are not the only thought experiments you could do, right? So you could think of more experiments if you want. For example, you could consider the experiment to measure the speed of light using mirrors, which we talked about before. So, according to S prime, we could consider this experiment. He only has one clock here, measuring time t, but he has mirrors here, okay? and he measures the time taken for the light to move between the mirrors. So you can consider this experiment, right? Then this experiment, again, you can consider from the other observer's perspective. He will see the mirrors moving and the light moving at the same time, okay? And he will see this clock time dilated, and he will see this distance length contracted, okay? And again, you can check whether or not the two observers agree on the final result, right? which is the time t measured here. So that's a useful exercise for you to do. I won't do it, I will just tell you that these conditions here work for any kind of experiment. Okay? So as long as, these value, this, as long as alpha, beta, and delta take these values, then the results of whatever experiment you devise will always be the same. Okay? So there's nothing special about the three experiments I did here. Okay? Any experiment will give you the same results in S and S prime frames.
provided alpha, beta, and delta take these values. If you don't believe me, then as I say, you can check it yourself. Think of an experiment and check it from the two different observers' perspectives. 